Welcome back, everyone. We're starting again. Uh, we have uh, again Job Snyders um, from NLNOG today to tell us how to form a NOG. Ciao a tutti. I wanted to, hey, the people in the back, co come here, come to the front. I can see you. Bye. <laughs> ITNOC as an institution has existed for quite some years, I've understood. But this is only the second event in many years, and I must add that this is a, a very successful event from, from my outsider perspective. If the people upstairs are quiet too. All right. Yeah. Um, so, so given that ITNOC in a way is both old and, and young at the same time, uh, I would like to share some perspective on how NLNOC operates and maybe this inspires you, or maybe you think that all I'm telling you is rubbish. Either way is fine. These are just my opinions, and you can beat me up um, after the event. <coughs> just like ITNOC, NONOC started, uh, I think, 10, 15 years ago with an IRC channel and a mailing list, and this was kind of copied from how the North American Network Operator Group did it. When they got their mailing list, some Dutch people thought, hey, we need a mailing list as well. And that's what happened. And there was a, a drinking component to it. We would meet at a yearly intervals, and we would uh, celebrate the new year. Clearly, this is uh, censorship. But it's not just about coming together and drinking. Uh, to build a community, testing one th there we go thank you as I was saying a community is not just about getting together and finding one poor sucker to pay for the booze a community needs substance to me a community is about sharing information with each other and creating an environment in which young people from say high school or university uh, can get in touch with old school operators and that we can help raise the next generation of uh, network operators. And the sharing knowledge part is crucial because it's very hard if everybody has to invent the wheel themselves. This is why I like events like this where we can freely speak our minds and, and talk about issues that are common to our operations even if we are competitors. Even better if we are competitors, because then you and I can truly understand each other because we are faced with the exact same challenges. And network operator groups are the ideal place to bring competitors together in a neutral setting. But to elaborate on what substance could mean for a community, and, and this is just the Dutch interpretation, I trust that ITNOC will develop its own projects and find its own path. Uh, but, but one of the things that I think made NLNOC stick closer to each other and uh, make cooperation easier was uh, the launch of the NLNOC Ring project. In 2010, I said on the ISC channel, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we can debug networks in a more easy way? Why don't we share access to Unix machines in each other's network? And that, that simple sentence completely escalated into a big project where there are 400 plus organizations in 
50 plus countries. Um, that's how uh, a snowball can start rolling and grow bigger and bigger. And this is why having these communication methods uh, like IRC or a mailing list or these physical meetups is crucial. Um, another aspect that NLNOC started with uh, relatively recent, this was three years ago, uh, to, to put more effort into sharing local knowledge. And you might recognize some of the aspects between NLNOC and ITNOC, for instance, a low budget event. I think the total cost of this event is less than 10,000 euros, which is nothing if you compare at the true value that each and of, uh, every one of us can, can leverage from a meeting like this. Another aspect, no marketing shit. You don't need people on the stage that will sell you their product. Selling ideas is great or discussing challenges, but if you have product pushers on your stage, then it becomes slightly weird because you're not sitting in this room to, to buy stuff, you're sitting in this room to learn. It's all volunteer based, just like IT knock, um, which is great because volunteer based means that it's truly a community driven effort and not somebody's secret agenda. If we look at the growth, um, ITNOC clearly has great potential because when NLNOC started organizing these, these local knowledge sharing days, it was first 30 people, the year after it was 80, and then this year it was 200 people. But you guys, I think there are, what is it, 120 already that attended today? That is fantastic. And to, to run the operations of an event like this in a smooth way, you really need a non-profit, legally registered organization. Um, I'll even go as far as saying this must be the last IT knock where there is no non-profit backing it. NTT is sponsoring this event, by, but I have to jump through hoops to get money in, into IT knock because IT knock cannot send me an invoice. Then the marketing people are like, where is the invoice? What are you doing? I'm like, um, I'll write down a receipt and I, it doesn't work that way. If you need, you need sponsors, that is a given, and without a non-profit, you will lose 90% of your sponsors. You need funding, that's also a critical part of uh, running a network operator group. And with funding, um, there, are, there are a few crucial aspects. Be sure that no single sponsor can overtake the event. And with that, I mean that if a sponsor comes to you and says, I will pay the whole event, everything, that is awesome. On the other hand, you should refuse and turn down that proposal because if you have only one sponsor, the risk of the event turning into a trade show or, or commercial circus is very high. And if the sponsor comes to you with unreasonable demands, what are you going to say? You, you cannot really bite the hand that feeds you. However, if you have multiple sponsors, then you can argue, look, we're treating each sponsor the same way, and if none of the sponsors are really bigger than the others, then from a risk perspective, you're in far better shape. So to put that in perspective, NLNOC at the last event had 17 sponsors. Each of those sponsors contributed a relatively small amount, uh, and that ensures that the event has great diversity on the sponsoring front, but it also legitimizes the event in that uh, a lot of sponsors shows that it is really a community-driven event, that if the industry is voting with their wallet saying, this is what we want, there is no better compliment than that. Other aspects of running the NOC are the t-shirts. Well, you guys got that done perfectly. Catering check. So I don't need to, to teach you in that regard anything. <laughs> if we focus on how the nonprofit NLNOC came into existence, the first NLNOC event I ran three years ago, I ran that out of my personal bank accounts, and that was unfortunate because I had to pay income tax on the sponsorship money. <laughs> so at the first NLNOC event, I said, 
we need this nonprofit, and, and here is my proposal for a board. And how I selected the board uh, was I, I looked in the community and I made a careful assessment of which group of people can work together with me, because you know I can be a pain in the ass sometimes. Um, which group of people is accepted by the community as, as nice, friendly people that, that are knowledgeable about what the community wants? Um, who of them have the, less, the least risk of trying to use the knock event for personal gain? So in a way, for instance, uh, that disqualifies salespeople because salespeople have a, uh, you know, nothing bad about salespeople, but their motive and objective is to increase sales. Well, the motive and objectives of an engineer are very different. And you need people that are crazy enough to invest a lot of time in this. Running an event like this is very time intensive. Hours and hours go into it, and you need people that are passionate and, and uh, caring enough to pour that energy into it. Um, so I selected a few people, and I said, I propose this will be the board of NLNOC. Community, do you agree or not agree? And the Dutch community said, yeah, that sounds fine. Boom, that was it. So in a similar way, maybe ITNOC uh, should take uh, a look at that. Going back to the, the funding part, you need not a lot of money. Uh, the, yearly, the yearly budget for NLNOC is uh, roughly 15,000. Uh, that's it, that's both events. That's a New Year's drink event and the, day, the, the knowledge sharing day. Um, the trick with funding is that you can lower the barrier for newcomers to attend. For instance, an Elnoc is has free entrance, and we will always have free entrance because we do not want to raise the barrier for anybody in any way to feel welcome at the, at the event. There are people that attend these events that pay this out of their own pocket. So if you make it easier for them, that is nice. Um, and keep in mind, a knock event, it's not a trade show. Your objectives are very different than events such as capacity, where people literally pay for uh, uh, a place on the floor to, to promote their products. And in that same uh, spirit, I highly recommend to never ever accept presentations in exchange for money. The moment somebody says, I'll give you money, but I want stage time, they are getting a better deal out of it than the network operator group. I consider every minute on this stage incredibly valuable, and from a marketing perspective, they are very expensive minutes because I have the attention of many, many engineers. And that is something you should not just lightly exchange for money, you should exchange it for good content, preferably local content. So sponsored talks, avoid them if you can. Um, then onwards, a knock event is there for the local community. Your local community comes first. The international community, such as me being here, is nice, but it should not be your priority. Your priority is Italy and Italian operators. Everything else, it's nice to have, but not a necessity. And this philosophy, you can see that in, for instance, the planning of the event's date. If it collides with international events, that's fine. You can have collisions because if, for instance, ITNOC and NLNOC are on the same day, there's no problem. We each have our communities that we need to cater to, and there is no competition in that regard. Um, a good content is what draws people to events like this. And, and I have to say, the program committee has done an excellent job, so this is a part that you guys clearly master. Uh, I have no worries there at all. To foster a community and to be productive members of this community, there are a few aspects that might be worth considering for ITNOC to, to encourage. Uh, one of them could be that you encourage publishing open source software under the ITNOC brand to bring engineers from different companies 
to, to work together on a tool set for, for common problems. Um, if I look at FRNOC, the, the French uh, network operator group, they have an interesting angle as well. One of their community members uh, is fluent in both English and French, and what he does is every time important documents come out, like RFCs, he takes the important parts of the RFC and translates that into French. And the advantage is that you really create a local culture of knowledge sharing in a language that everybody is comfortable with. I have no idea what the, the English speaking capabilities are of the average person in Italy, but I do imagine that communicating with each other in your native tongue is of course easier than trying to speak a different language. So this, this might be something uh, worth considering. And another aspect is that you set clear rules of engagement. You have your IRC channel, there is a mailing list, and always make it clear that you expect certain civilized behavior from each other. And Elnok made a small mistake in that years ago where we did not have policies and nobody was uh, correcting each other, so a lot of chatter in the IRC channel was needlessly harmful or sexist or racist. And at some point we just pulled the plug and said, no more, we need to behave as adults, this is our policy going forward. And that very much cleared up the air and made it much easier to work with each other. So having seen uh, things that you could do in this community to, to encourage the sense of community, um, there's another aspect that I would like to highlight. And the Dutch people are known to be very blunt and direct and go straight to the target instead of political maneuvering. Um, but looking at the fact that I think you really, really need a nonprofit organization as soon as possible, I propose that you take these volunteers as your board and do not argue about it for months. Next year, you will have a new event. The event will be bigger. There will be 200 people, maybe. There will be serious money involved. And if you have to run that through personal accounts, that is terrible. So get that nonprofit in order. Just select a group of volunteers that everybody can agree to and get it over with. This is what I wanted to share. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions for Job? Job, there are questions. Not actually a question. Uh, I want to remind people that uh, actually there is uh, a regional meeting uh, there in Milano every month uh, this year every first uh, uh, Thursday of uh, uh, each month so if you don't know about it please ask me about it or maybe uh, if you are not from Milano please uh, try to organize uh, something in uh, your own city we meet uh, uh, every month uh, to have food and beer so th that's really easy to organize. Any other questions or remarks? Hi, Job, and thanks for this excellent presentation about uh, uh, the ITNOG. It's extremely useful for the community to know what are the lessons uh, learned from uh, other uh, NOGs initially, like the Netherlands and like France. I truly appreciate that you're putting this uh, in slides. And I um, also um, would like to have your opinion about how we can help as outsiders to foster NOG creations in some more um, uh, uh, remote uh, 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 countries on a training point of view. I mean, by example, uh, uh, North Africa. How can we, as an, out as an outsider, try to uh, encourage the people, the locals there, to uh, do um, to mount a NOG as well? Uh, do you think that there could be some uh, opportunities, some need here to create a document to uh, have some uh, guidelines, some advice under the form of a document to uh, pass over to them? Would that Absolutely. Be um, but I will go one step further. I've been talking to ISOC, the Internet Society. They it's an organization that has an interest in fostering uh, local operator communities. And the ISOC people said, 
hey, what if we have this one singular document that describes how everything works? And I argued, there can never be one document that describes how everything works, because the Dutch culture and the Dutch way the NOC is organized will always be different than, for instance, how UK NOC does it, or Germany, or IT NOC. Each of these network operator groups have their own identity, their own rules, their own expectations. So what I would propose is that there is not one document, but that NOCs take the time to write their own origin story, their own rules and values, and that if a North American uh, person is interested in setting up a NOC, he is not reading one document, but for instance, six documents. And from those six documents, he will realize that each NOC has its own individuality, and then he will conclude that it's perfectly acceptable if the North American NOC also has its own identity. We don't need people to copy-paste from country to country to country, because that does not work. What does work is just sharing my perspective, your perspective, and if we write that down and give it to a third person, the third person can make up his own mind and decide his own course. So if you want to help write a document, awesome, write your own. <laughs> Okay, well, I already have one, so that is also the reason why I was um, asking this. And um, I actually find that your answer makes a lot of sense. It's pretty wise to uh, leave room for people to grow in uh, the direction that they decided independence of what is already existing in the community. Um, however, if you would have like any proposal to uh, have this in a, in a repository for people uh, trying to create a NOG, in other regions to to uh, uh, to have some uh, support and to get some success here, feel free to let me know because I have some people in uh, Morocco, in Tunisia that are also really trying to to find their ways here. I'll, I'll ping you um, via email uh, this weekend, and uh, I can uh, point you to where the repository could potentially be hosted and uh, distributed. And uh, yeah, let's follow up on this later. Thanks a lot. Cheers. So nobody objected to the board proposal. Um, guys, Monday, go to the notary, get it over with. Okay.